World Health Organization just declared this a global health emergency. At least six states banning large gatherings of people. This is what the health care workers have resorted to. They're wearing garbage bags. Decided to evacuate 78 of its residents and move them someplace new. The COVID-19 pandemic showed how devastating a medical emergency or natural disaster can be to nursing homes. From a lack of safety equipment to isolation to a staggering loss of life. Severe staffing shortages also meant outside crisis response teams had to fill in, often with no experience working with residents with neurological impairments that could lead to disruptive behaviors. We know that challenging behaviors are difficult, not only for the resident, but also for staff and crisis responders. This video training series is designed to prepare crisis responders to provide compassionate crisis care, to reduce challenging behaviors during emergencies and disasters when every minute counts. In this video, our focus is on a critical first responder in nursing homes, the Virginia Medical Reserve Corps. MRC volunteers played an important role in nursing homes during the pandemic. We collected COVID tests, administered vaccines, and even filled in for staff at some facilities. Volunteers also help nursing home residents when they're evacuated to emergency shelters during emergencies or disasters. At least 95% of nursing home residents have behaviors that may be challenging due to neurological or psychiatric disorders, including dementias, mental illnesses, and mild cognitive impairment. In addition, our residents suffering behavioral complications from strokes, traumatic brain injuries, and intellectual disabilities. All of these impairments can lead to behaviors that can be difficult to manage, even for MRC volunteers with medical experience. In this video, we'll learn more about these challenging behaviors, as well as some positive interaction techniques that can help avoid or diffuse them. These techniques are rooted in patient-centered care, which is an approach that starts with understanding the resident's point of view and then individualizing care to respond to their unique emotional and social needs. Let's look at how challenging behaviors might emerge during routine nasal swab testing. Time to take your test. Uh, no, who you are you? Who are you? What, what do you want? Won't hurt. Just no, no, the, no, hey, this now. is not right. Get away. No. Neurological impairments can change the way residents perceive their environment, distort their visual and auditory processing, reduce their ability to make sense of what's happening, or to make their needs known. Just imagine how disconcerting it would be for a resident with dementia to see a stranger wearing full PPE invade their personal space with a nasal swab. From a person-centered care perspective, challenging behaviors are more than problems to be dealt with and suppressed, but rather important clues that can help the caregiver perceive what may be going on in the mind of the resident. It is the resident's way of communicating stress, confusion, or feeling threatened. And we need to try and understand what the resident is trying to communicate and communicate back with calm, non-threatening care that helps diffuse agitation and confusion that the resident is experiencing. Disruptions to routines, new faces, and irregular procedures are especially difficult for residents with neurological impairments. Understand that you may need to spend more time with these residents to avoid disruptive behaviors. Use the following positive interaction techniques to build trust minimize confusion for the resident, and help you accomplish your work more effectively. Reduce stimulations like noise or bright lights. Use non-threatening body language and facial expressions. Communicate face-to-face -face and at the resident's eye level. Use a calm tone of voice. Communicate simply and clearly, and not too quickly. A resident may need time to absorb what you're saying and make sense of it. Give the resident time to respond. If available, ask a regular staff person or a trusted family member to be present. Their presence and knowledge of the resident can help avert many disruptions. If that's not possible, your MRC partner can provide a comforting presence to the resident while you administer the test. 
Let's see how these positive interaction techniques can improve our emergency situation. Hello, Mrs. Martin. Yeah. My name is Hillary. I'm a nurse. And this is Nancy. She's also a nurse. You're a nurse too? Yes. You look kind of funny. Yes. And, and, and we're here because we need to do a test on you, okay? Test? Yes. Uh, it's, it's just a swab of the back of your nose. It, it won't hurt. You'll be a little uncomfortable, but it won't hurt. Is it okay it if you do hurt. that? My nurse said it's okay. Yes. We're doing every, all the residents here today. Okay, I can Okay, is that all right? So, is it okay to go ahead and do this? Okay. Okay? All right, okay. here we go. MRC volunteers might also interact with residents in emergency shelters if they are evacuated during an emergency or natural disaster. How are you? Where am I? This is a shelter. Where? This is a shelter in Norfolk. Am I safe? You're absolutely safe here. Why am I not home? Can no. I get your name? No. No, am I safe? You're safe here. You don't need to be I'm afraid. afraid. You don't need to be afraid. Am I You're safe? Okay. You are am I safe here? Hi, safe. I'm Gwen. Gwen. You're going to be just fine here. You're safe here, as a matter here. of fact. So, hey, you know what? How about we watch a movie together? Movie? It's a great movie on my phone. Your my phone? cell phone. We can, as a matter of fact, we can go right over here at this quiet place and watch the movie together. Now? Yes, right now. now. Okay? So oh, let's turn okay. around here. Okay, and I heard that your name is Lee. Yes. So let's yes. go over here. Changes in routine can trigger agitation. If you notice agitation, gently approach the resident with non-threatening body language and reassure them with a calm tone of voice. Gently redirect the resident's attention to a different activity. Encourage your MRC team to have diversion items that engage residents' hands, such as fidgets, magazines, simple crafts, or items to fold. If nothing else is available, you can use your cell phone to play music or show a movie that may engage the resident. Let's see how these techniques can help in this situation. I think you're going to enjoy it. And movie. let me pull up my uh, chair here. I'm gonna sit down beside you and watch it and take out my phone. Movie. Okay, here we go. So, you're gonna love this. It's also important to remember that not all behaviors are challenging or problematic. For example, a resident pacing or exploring may be a frustration to staff, but not a challenging behavior if the resident is not at risk or putting others at risk. If you are unsure, you can ask a supervisor or nurse at the shelter for guidance. And if you have enough MRC volunteers available, you could assign someone to accompany residents who want to walk or to sit with residents who exhibit confusion. Also, be aware of the signs and symptoms of someone who is escalating towards aggression or about to have a break. These signs can include pacing, removing clothing, particular types of staring, changes in cognition, changes in ability to articulate verbally, mood changes, as well as other signs listed on the screen. Let's look at another emergency situation where a young resident with a traumatic brain injury is struggling at an emergency shelter. I want to be here. I want to go home. I want to go home. Okay. I want to go home. I can help. I can help. Get the hell away from me. I can help. I said get the hell. In this situation, the resident has become physically aggressive and may pose a safety risk to the volunteer and themselves block any blows. Never hit back at a resident. Step out of reach and remain calm. Don't take verbal abuse personally. Use calming communication techniques. Redirect attention. If you are not able to diffuse aggressive behavior, notify a supervisor immediately. And most importantly, make sure to inform any first responder who becomes involved that this resident may have a neurological disorder, which may affect their ability to comprehend the situation they are in or to communicate clearly. By working together to provide compassionate crisis care, we can be prepared for emergencies in the future and give residents the care and dignity they deserve. For more information, please log onto the website on your screen.